Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Sheila Boyington with Million Mama Mentors, and uh, we are excited to have you all joining us today for the Million Mentors uh, overview for the state of Indiana. Um, I am thrilled to be joined by Big Brothers Big Sisters leader Amanda Redenbaugh. Um, who is from Indiana and, um, or is in Indiana, I should say, <laughs> um, and from Indiana, from what I understand. And so um, if you'll give us a couple of minutes, we're going to let people uh, have a few minutes to join, and then we'll get started. Um, probably about two or three after, just to give everybody a, a chance to uh, dial in. Um, if you are in and you would like to share who you are, you can certainly share it with the chat um, of who's here. And also, if you wanted to um, ask any questions, please feel free to put that in the chat box as well. Also happy to have Amy Etten on. She leads Million Mama Mentors for STEM Connector and she is listening in today. So welcome, Amy. Hey, welcome. <clears throat> All right, I think we'll go ahead and uh, get started. And thank you again for joining. Oh, and we have Joe Weber too, who is our CEO from STEM Connector. And we'll talk a little bit about STEM Connector and Million Mentors as well. So welcome again, um, Sheila Boyington, and um, really excited to be with you guys today to talk a little bit about Million Mentors and Indiana. Our, our presenters today um, will be myself. I'm Sheila Boyington. I'm president of Learning Blade, but also serve as the national stage chair for Million Women Mentors. And um, I am joined by Amanda Redenbaugh of Big Brothers Big Sisters, Unfortunately, Mary McGuire, who has also been our state chair for a number of years, ha was called away by her real day job. She's an engineer and they had an audit that she was called into. So unfortunately, she will not be able to join us, but she is a very passionate woman engineer who has been working with Million Mentors for the last six years. She was one of our first chairs. And um, I can just tell you from personal experience that Mary really walks the walk because she is a mentor to so many young women um, across the state of Indiana and, and has been. So I just wanna give her that real shout out. Um, but I'd love to turn it over to Amanda for a minute for her to say hello and welcome everybody. Hi everybody. I'm Amanda Redenbaugh. I'm the marketing coordinator at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Southwestern Indiana. And I'm so excited to be here with Million Women Mentors and Sheila. Thank you everybody for having me. And I'm a big sister myself, so I'm very passionate about mentoring. So thank you. Wonderful. And you'll hear from Amanda a little bit later when she'll share a little bit about her organization as well as some of our thoughts around uh, Million Women Mentors and our work in Indiana. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys feel comfortable to do, go ahead and enter your name and your organization in our chat box. That way people can also see who all is on. And again, you know, this is really about uh, connections and working, uh, working together. Um, we're gonna start off just talking a little bit about Million Mentors, kind of what is it, so to speak. And, um, and then certainly a little bit about our vision for Indiana, as well as um, letting Amanda share a little bit about her work and with the big brothers and big sisters, and then really opportunities for your engagement and million mentors in Indiana and those next steps. Because you know we want this not to be just about you guys hearing something and going on with your day. We really hope that you hear something today that will excite you about the future and working with this, um, with this effort to really grow and get more girls and women into STEM careers. So just starting off, you know, kind of to level set everyone um, really about the why and what types of things we are doing. You know, women today are 50% of the workforce, yet we are only 24% of the STEM workforce. But what was very alarming to us is when we looked at this data, 
50% of women that go into STEM drop out in the first 10 years. You know, there are a lot of theories about why and how, et cetera, but, but it suffices to say there are many, many reasons. And so it's not that we're gonna address every single one of them, but we'll talk about, you know, what we think is an important piece in that. The other thing is our partners at My College Options um, actually do surveys every year to kind of ask students about, you know, what is their interest as they're graduating and their studies that, you know, as just a few years ago, really started to show that the interest in STEM for girls with, at graduation was actually declining. And so, you know, it's very important um, at the time and still is for us to continue to, you know, not let our guard down on making sure we can move this number in the right direction. You know, STEM jobs really, you know, this isn't just about an equity issue, which we certainly talk about the numbers in terms of equity, but I always think about this being an economic issue too. You know, uh, women, I think you, most people understand, you know, women don't earn the same amount. I think the actual numbers, like I think 81 cents now to a dollar for most jobs. And, you know, so I think it's really important to highlight the fact that, you know, when you have a STEM degree, you're able to really more approach the dollar level for dollar to dollar for what men earn. I mean, I think that's, you know, really an important piece of the equation as we talk about the need for having more women and girls to pursue these STEM careers. Um, we don't always have to just make it talking about the numbers, but we can also have a conversation about economics and how this is a really a propelling us toward a better future for women. If we also continue to look, you know, there's a lot of data that continues to show us where we are is, you know, that 44% of boys say they're interested in pursuing a college major in the STEM field, where only 15% of women tell us that. Uh, one in nine women say that they're going to plan to pursue a career in engineering or technology. You know, these numbers really are still not changing as much as we would want them to. You know, well, yes, they have somewhat gotten better. You know, I always think it's so amazing that it took us that long to even make the movie Hidden Figures. You know, we didn't know so much of what, what went on and has gone on in the past. And I think, you know, in looking at what is happening today with the pandemic, women have been disproportionately affected and impacted by these. So, I mean, you know, these numbers are from a couple of years ago. I think if we're going to start looking at numbers, they may really start to get even more, uh, you know, more dramatic in terms of that. So how, how can we possibly impact that? And, and, you know, while definitely more math, more science, all of that is great. I think, you know, one of the things that the reason that Million Mentors even was launched was, you know, when we were really considering, you know, what, what could be something that we could talk about a way to impact this was the fact that, you know, mentoring has a lot of benefits. And this is interesting because this is not just benefits for the mentee. This is also benefits that impact the mentors as well. So let's first talk, start out. We talk about, you know, girls with a mentor are two and a half times more likely to be confident in their ability. You know, that's just one piece right there. You know, making sure that they feel empowered to, you know, speak their mind. The second is also for companies, you know, employees who volunteer in their community are two times more likely to be, be more engaged at work. And companies that have these engaged employers, employees are really outperforming others by two, over 200%. Now, you know, like we can talk about, yes, it's a benefit for the future workforce or the current workforce in terms of if you have mentoring within your company, but it is a benefit for the employer as well. The other piece is it's a benefit for the employee that mentors as well too, because you are six times more likely to be promoted if you mentor. You know, these are numbers that came out of a study at Wharton in Pennsylvania. So these are very highly validated numbers that show us that mentoring is a very powerful tool in our toolkit. Um, you know, we've been very lucky to also have some national honorary chairs who have stepped into Million Mentors. And one of the first ones was, she was Lieutenant Governor at the time, Kim Reynolds, who really took Million Mentors and made it a part of their statewide strategy to encourage more girls to
to consider STEM classes and STEM careers. And so, you know, really using this as an uh, sort of an opportunity to amplify that message is one of our critical components. So given all of that, you know, Million Women Mentors has evolved into really what we consider to be the premier network dedicated to encouraging girls and women around the world, not just in the US now, around the world to pursue, persist and succeed in STEM careers. You know, we have many, 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 many involved with our, what, what was our movement. And now we have really started to call it a network because it is so robust. But we have individuals, companies and girl serving organizations that can participate with us in Million Mentors through membership or through other opportunities. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. When we talk about mentoring, you know, when we were first launching the movement, we really wanted to make sure we could define mentoring in a broader way. You know, I think all of us, you know, in back in the day and what we thought about mentoring was always really one to one, right? You had a mentee or et cetera, things like that. And the face to face mentoring is definitely still a premier way to impact these numbers. But, you know, there's a lot of other opportunities now that I think can be very powerful. So online mentoring, or, you know, I think of it as texting or Facebook messaging, all of that, uh, you know, even though I may be old, I still can do some of that. In fact, I've been a mentee for nine years and she and I do most of our mentoring over our text messages. Um, and so, you know, thinking a little bit outside the box of how to use technology as a way to communicate um, is really exciting as well. In fact, STEM Connector, which is sort of the parent organization over Million Mentors, has some really exciting tools that they'll be launching soon that will help us to even connect and be part of each other's sort of networks. Additionally, you know, we want people to think intentionally about internships and apprenticeships. You know, a lot of times those are just thrown out there with not a lot of intentionality around, can we get girls and women into these careers? Um, my own daughter worked for a tech company in Chicago and uh, uh, last summer, not this past one, because I don't even know if we can count this past year's life, but <laughs> the summer before, they had an internship program where they only selected girls to be part of their internships. So it was a really way to put a stake in the sand to say, we think women are important in tech fields. And that's a really something that we encourage companies to think about. Additionally, working, workplace mentoring is very important. You know, we've had some amazing members and sponsors of Million Mentors that include companies like PepsiCo and BP and Tata Consultancy and other. And, you know, a lot of these companies didn't necessarily have an intentional thinking program around mentoring when we first started working with them. Now, a lot of them have evolved and have really robust mentoring efforts within their companies. So getting involved with Million Mentors, you get exposed to some of what this might look like. Last but certainly not least, and something we're hearing a little bit more about today is what we call sponsorship. I like to think of sponsorship is really when you are advocating for a woman, a young woman or a student, even when they're not in the room. You know, someone who will help you with your career, shepherd you, help advise you, move your career forward, but will also be the advocate for you when you're not around. And so, you know, a lot of times we don't think about that as a form of mentoring, but it's a very effective way to lift up those behind us and, and help them with their own career. So to talk just a little bit about our core components of Million and Mentors, um, today what you're experiencing and hearing a little bit about is sort of what is Million Mentors, but then we're really going to focus a, more on what does our state movement look like? You know, when we launched the movement six years ago, you know, there was really relatively little going on that talked about mentoring. There, were, there are many organizations that are focused on women and girls in STEM, but a lot of them didn't focus on the mentoring aspect. And so that was one of the pieces that we did. Secondly, there's corporate engagement. You know, as we continue to build the network that are involved in Million Mama Mentors, we have a lot of corporations that find this as a very important tool for them and a system and a connection that they want to be part of being involved with us in this network across the country. 
you know, uh, Dr. Joe Weber's on our webinar today as a participant, but, you know, she said it beautifully a couple of weeks ago when she and I were talking about, you know, Million Mentors has really been elevated to the point that if you're doing work that is focused on getting more girls and women into STEM careers, um, you know, why aren't you part of Million Mama Mentors? We want you to be part because really we are amplifying that message all across. More recently, we have launched some efforts in global communities as well, just most recently in Turkey. Um, we've done work with Pakistan and India and some other countries as well, because obviously this is not an issue that is only in the United States. This is something that transcends our uh, country lines. And so making sure that we are really amplifying and empowering women to pursue these careers is something that really works for everybody. And then lastly, but not least, is the community engagement, you know, where we could talk about, you know, the country and states and corporations, et cetera. The real work happens in communities. And so, you know, I'm just thrilled that we have Amanda with us for Indiana and, you know, working at ways to make sure that we can connect all the different things that are going on to Million Mama Mentors so we can certainly amplify and talk about this work further. Now, talking really about the state's network, I'll talk a little bit about the components, but really to go back and sort of lay out some of the things that we believe are the features of what we offer with Million Mentors is, you know, really the way to make imp an impact for women and girls in STEM, period. You know, that is something that we live and sleep with and do every single day that really helps us to amplify that message across many, many sectors. The other reason, my, why would you might want to get involved in Million Mentors? You know, you can be seen then as a leader in encouraging girls and women in STEM careers. You know, we have many different opportunities to participate in webinars that we do. Of course, during the pandemic, it's mostly been that, but we've had a lot of in-person events prior to that. Every year have a very large summit that is in um, DC. And hopefully if everybody gets their vaccines, we can go back to doing that again this fall. And then also it is about gaining recognition for either your company or your industry. You know, we have a great effort that is uh, Million Women Mentors Women in Insurance, you know, because insurance is one of those areas, a lot of times we don't grow up thinking, I'm going to be in insurance. Um, so, you know, that is an opportunity where we can highlight some industries that may not have been thought of as a really great STEM opportunity. You know, when you're in an industry like insurance, there are a multitude of STEM types of careers, whether it be database and analyst and all different kinds of tech jobs that you could actually get in that, in that field. And a lot of people just simply don't know about them. And lastly, it is an opportunity to gain recognition for a corporate leader. You know, we have a lot of people that are involved with us in Million Mentors. And I wanna to clarify too, just because we're called Million Mama Mentors does not mean that all our mentors need to be women. You know, if we're going to get this and turn this ship around, so to speak, we need all hands on deck. So we need mentoring from men as well. And we have many, many, many men that are involved with us in this movement. Now, if we look at our states, the way our state is, states are organized um, and, you know, every state, this is very organic because our states are very much volunteers at the moment. And so, you know, we really try to work around what is passion for them. So we start out with um, really our state leader, much like Amanda and Mary are. And we hold this webinar, what we're doing today, which again, you know, kind of ebbing flowing as we continue this movement and the network, but we have a steering committee that hopefully will come out of today. People that just want to raise their hand and say they want to be involved, they want to be connected and figuring out what they might do as they go forward. And we have, as I mentioned earlier, had some honorary chairs in different states. Not every state has an honorary chair, but a lot of states do. And in Indiana, we have had Dr. Sue Elsperman. She serves as our honorary chair. She was Lieutenant Governor, and she's actually a woman engineer, PhD in engineering as well. So very authentic leader, uh, spoke at our first Million Women Mentor Summit in DC many years ago but just an amazing leader for this movement. So as we are sort of reconstituting, I would say our steering committee under new leadership with Amanda, 
um, and certainly with Mary, you know, we'll be looking to re-engage her so that we can make sure that we continue to use her opportunity now as the head of Ivy Tech to really amplify that message of women and girls in STEM. And as I mentioned, we have the state movement. We have over 40 states that are involved here. So, you know, if you are a company or an organization that have people in other states, we'll welcome you. We'll show you how you can get connected to the different states that you might work in. As I mentioned earlier, we do have these national honorary chairs and state honorary chairs. There's Dr. Elsperman. And, um, you know, again, we're not trying to politicize the movement, but what we're trying to do is use these platforms as a way to really be able to share more about what Million Mentors is across these different states. We also, as I mentioned earlier, have a tremendous network of organizations, companies, many brands that you'll be familiar with that have stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, we want to help support this effort. And so many of them become an official member of Million Women Mentors, where they're allowed then to really, you know, even go even further in using our brand, using the opportunities that we offer to speak more about, um, about the movement and the effort. Um, of course, today we're here to talk about Indiana. So great state there. I, I was sharing with Amanda, I'm very fond of Indiana because my, our youngest daughter went to school at IU. Um, and studied informatics and entrepreneurship. And so, you know, I think uh, very highly of your institutions, obviously Purdue is well world-class in um, tech as well, but the, you have many different institutions that are very, very strong in that um, as well. So to talk again, go back to a little bit about who can be involved or who is involved, you know, this is very much a uh, a, a way that we want people to be able to connect to us. So we want companies, we want organizations that are looking to really be at the table to talk about the ways that mentoring and getting more women in STEM can be beneficial for their own companies. We also have many post-secondary K-12 organizations that are part of what we do as well. And then of course, nonprofits like Amanda's group and others who really will be uh, important in connecting these groups together to allow for mentoring to happen. You know, Amanda herself said she has a mentee already. And so, you know, it's really important that, you know, it's nice when we have these nonprofit groups that can actually work with us to provide those connections to different girls for mentoring and women as well. And then the state and regional organizing uh, efforts that we're talking about today. As I mentioned every year, uh, we had a virtual one last year, but in 2019, we had our government leaders and we had our state leaders come to DC and we have a wonderful MWM summit that has breakout sessions and you know the, the things that you might consider being at, of course, at a conference, but it's really a great opportunity for us to have those collision opportunities to meet people and find out the different work that they're doing and then hopefully get to learn more and be part of that work as well. The other thing we do, you know, is one thing to sort of say million mentors and set up a stake, put a stake in the ground in the States. But one of the things we want people to remember is, you know, we're not here to try to be another program for you all. We're really here to take the things that you're already doing and connect through, through our network to many different organizations. Last year, well, not last year, the year before, I'm going back to 2019 again, we counted over 150 events in our states that were, that were connected to Million Women Mentors. We have a wonderful newsletter that goes out once a month. We have the way to amplify through our social media. In fact, I think we've heard like in the last year, only three or four days were there ever that the Million Mentors was not mentioned in media of some sort. So we have a very, very robust network where that is concerned. So if you're already doing things that are focused on some of the things that we talked about today, we encourage you to send that information to us and it gets put into our newsletter, it gets tweeted out, et cetera. We have a lot of activity as it, as it pertains to that. We also, um, as, as you know now, when we're talking about state leaders, we do have a state leader team 
that comes together once a month to share a little bit about what some of their best practices are or ideas they might have or question each other. So every month, Amanda and or Mary participate with us in a, in a state and national call where we will hear and we've heard from many different states, these are some of the best practices that we've heard over the last few years that really allow us to continue to build the movement because we're able to hear from different people and then highlight that. And then you can say, hey, I heard that Rhode Island was doing this. And you could say, we might do that in Indiana. So again, it's an opportunity for you all to be able to learn from each other. You know, we don't have all the answers. We're in this with you all, and we want to help, um, help to move it forward. Each year, we also prepare what is called our State of the States. Um, it's kind of a way for a one-page document to be utilized that can actually sort of capture what is going on in your state in regards to million women mentors. You know, so there are many different ways to be a part of this. Um, as you see, this was the steering committee that we have had. And, you know, we really want to encourage people to use this as a resource to see exactly how they might participate in that. Lastly, I wanted to have Amanda share a little bit about her organization, the work that they're doing in terms of women and girls in STEM. And um, I'd love to turn it over to Amanda now. Thanks. Thanks, Sheila. Um, so Big Brothers Big Sisters, our mission is to create and support one-to-one -one mentoring relationships and ignite the power and promise in youth. Um, our enrollment age is from eight to 12, but we serve littles from eight to 18. Like our bigs can stay with their littles till they graduate high school. And sometimes that relationship goes even further. Um, I know former bigs that are still in contact with their littles and they're in college and doing big things. So it's awesome to see former bigs, current bigs, and all the, all the relationships that grow through our program. Um, so we want our youth and our community to reach their full potential through lasting relationships. And we have been in Southern Indiana for 52 years. We serve Vandenberg, Warwick, Gibson, Spencer Posey and even Henderson in Kentucky. And our website is mentoringkids.org. Um, so we love to share stories. Um, Brianne, her, she lives with her grandma and sometimes she's mean with, to her siblings, but she feels like she can talk to her big sister, Kathleen, about her relationship with her brothers. It's always nice to have um, someone that you can talk to if you live in a house with your grandma and other siblings you might not feel as comfortable talking about things so um that's why we think it's important to have a big in your life to have a mentor that you can talk to about everyday things um this is one of our big sisters megan she's a news anchor here in evansville and she just adores her little sister olivia um they can't they did a photo shoot for us it was awesome they love to eat they love to go out and have snacks and get pizza i think their favorite food is mexican they like to get together um but they're just so hilarious to see they made friendship bracelets that say big and little um but most importantly, Megan talks about how positive of an impact it makes on her life. Like Sheila was saying earlier, um, like we don't make impacts only on our little's life. It helps like your life is impacted just as much. So I love to share Megan's story. Um, so I just wanna encourage everyone to join um, million women mentors and it's just a great way to connect and network with other people like Sheila was saying there's a newsletter there's lots of calls that you guys can be part of um, so I highly encourage it it's great it's a great resource um, great to learn from others um, and like Sheila said we're all learning every day and I would love to learn from you guys as well so please um, join million dollar million women mentors and the committee so we would love to have you guys so thank you
Yeah. And she looks great. Her team is awesome. She helped me set up this webinar. Um, she reaches out to people with their technology and they helps with the slides. Everything was super easy. And I'm just very appreciative that you guys had me as a guest today. Well, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. And yeah, you know, as Amanda mentioned, as we are sort of what I would say, reconstituting a, a bit of our Million Mentors team in Indiana, um, as she mentioned, you know, we do try to make this as painless as possible. But also, I think it's important to, you know, most people that get involved with us are definitely your type A personality. So we want everything to be perfect. And we want you know, to do so much. And I think we can be very hard on ourselves when we think we're not doing enough. But I remind people, you know, particularly our volunteers that get involved with us from organizations like the Big Brothers Big Sisters or Girls Inc. or Science Olympiad or any of the one many organizations that we have involved, you know, that you are really anything you do is better than nothing. So, you know, just remembering that and giving yourself a pass to say, you know, that it is okay. Um, as we talked about earlier in the call, you know, this, this pandemic has, has really disproportionately impacted women. And so I think, you know, this is a way for us to organize and be engaged in empowering women, as I mentioned, in a way that really can impact their economics. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, if they are in school or, you know, they're in new, new, newly hired, that we're giving them the career pathway opportunities toward STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, you know, tech skills and tech organizations and tech jobs that actually can help really as they are building their life. So our call to action today, as we said, um, you know, Megan, I mean, uh, Amanda, think about Megan already, your, your wonderful mentor, you know, is that we're asking you to consider joining our state steering committee um, we're going to be following up with an email to everyone that's participating today with that ask as well. And of course, if you are a company or an organization and you want to get a deeper involvement with Million Mentors and our state teams, we're definitely interested in that. We'll ask you as well if you're interested in that. And we do have some new team members that are going to be working with you to even make that more impactful. And of course, other girl serving organizations or other nonprofits, you know, we really want you at the table as well as we continue to find opportunities when we work with companies and others in the state that we can connect you to. So lastly, what are, what are your next steps? You know, be a part of the Indiana Steering Committee. Definitely encourage your company or organization to be active in this. You know, we have companies that you know, are very active and they work with their, uh, to really help their employees get engaged with this as well. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we are looking for companies that want to make an investment in this work. You know, this can be very impactful for the state's economics and for your company's economics as well. More recently, we are setting up and we have a Million Mentors Indiana LinkedIn page. Um, which we would love to have you get connected to. So that way we have a sort of your network and the ability to communicate in that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, STEM Connector is actually the creators, uh, well, I guess Pod is the creators of some new technology that you're gonna be seeing and hearing from in the, in the near future that will allow some of this to be done within that, um, that network. But until that time, we're using the LinkedIn opportunity to connect people. And we just would also just wanna encourage you to you know, consider Million Mentors and the Indiana effort uh, to connect your events to. So if that's something that you wanna do, you know, Amanda will have um, the ability to share uh, the Million Mentors logo with you as well, the one that it, we have specially made for Indiana. So you can certainly do that too. And then of course, we encourage you to tell a friend you know, make sure that you can tell people um, in terms of, um, you know, what you're doing and get them connected because there's many opportunities, um, many opportunities to do this. So just love to, uh, I'm just quickly looking to see if we have any questions, if there are any questions in the chat box, happy to answer them. Again, you know, thank you so much for the time that you spent with us today to learn a little bit more about Million Women Mentors, where 
We're here to work with you. There's a wonderful team that's part of the STEM Connector Millionaire Mentors National Team that I mentioned, Amy Etten on the phone, uh, on the webinar, as well as I see a few others, Jack Koki and Ted Wells. So uh, just really appreciate you guys um, having, having a, a little time with us today and your busy schedule. Again, we are going to use the LinkedIn opportunity for you all to share information about events and things that you're doing within the state that you want others to know about it. And certainly if you share those with Amanda, uh, we have once a month a call for any kind of state efforts that are going on that go into our newsletter that come out every month, the first Monday of every month. Um, if you wanna be actually participate and be in the, get that newsletter, if you will email us, you can email us at states at millionmentors.com. We'll get you on the newsletter list. And if you would like to connect directly with Amanda and or Mary, here are their emails. And happy to connect with you as well, um, listed here too, but we'll definitely be following up with an email after this. And um, I don't know, Amanda, if you just like to thank everybody and um, and we'll, we'll be done. Yeah, thanks everybody. I hope you look into Million Women Mentors and Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I hope you have a good day and enjoy the spring weather. You never know what kind of weather you're gonna get here in Indiana. <laughs> Hey, after the last year, we really don't know what we're gonna get, period. <laughs> weather <Sure>. or else. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.